Two years ago, I crossed the Berlin finish line in 2.20 and 8 seconds. Here's a look at what my face looked like. So this session is tailored all around finding those 9 seconds and going there and smashing that 2.20 barrier once and for all. Today, it's my biggest training session of the block. 4Ks warm up, 3 times 10 k harder efforts with 1K float recovery in between, followed by 3K cool down. Total run, 40 kilometers. It's a session I've done a few times and let me tell you something, it does not get easier. If anything, it gets a little bit harder because you know what you're about to put your body through. Just to remind you, goal marathon pace is 318, 319 per kilometer. When I ran 2.20 in 8 seconds, I averaged 319, it wasn't quite enough, so let's go with 318 on this occasion. So remember, we always want to progress through our training, it's by far the most productive way to train. Starting off more comfortable, finishing faster. So to give you an idea, the first set we're targeting at 327 per kilometer, which is about 8 or 9 seconds per k slower than goal marathon pace. And well, thankfully this feels comfortable. If it didn't, I would be in big trouble right we'll now. We'll do it today, you know. Give you support. I usually wear red. <laughs> As you can see, I've got a buddy here today, Rue, joining me and so thankful to have him for this session. Honestly, having any company for a session of this magnitude helps so much. I cannot describe to you how much it helps. When it's just you, you face those demons completely alone. And yes, while it makes you stronger, it's probably around 100 times harder than having a bit of company. I know he's joining for the first two sets and for the last set he's got a shoot off for graduation so when it's business time and that last one that's going to be solo. Let me give you a couple of tips to successfully pull off a productive training session. So number one you need to practice your race day routine. Wake up everything the same time you would as race day. Get the body used to it. If it works don't change it. You've been through it before. Number two practice that race day fueling. All right, what works for me not, might not work for you. We need to work out what works for you best. Once again, once you found it, stick with it, don't change it. Number three, as mentioned earlier, we're looking for a progression effort to gradually get faster and faster as the session goes on. And then finally, number four, you do not want to go above threshold too early on. If we're doing a progression effort, naturally we should stay below threshold for a big portion of the session. If we burn too many of our matches and go into the red too early on, we're going to struggle, we're going to hit a wall, and the session won't be as productive as it could have been. Once again, I'm not going to add any music this video just to give you a real feel for what the training session was like and just how hard I'm working and suffering out there at certain points. As you can see, me and Rue have got into a really nice rhythm here. We're sharing the work at the moment. In the beginning, we were running side by side, but we actually decided, okay, cool, let's take one kilometer each. It's quite nice. It's your turn. You make sure you're on pace. When it's not your turn, you can mentally switch off just a little bit and follow the pace. I was pretty nervous going into the session uh, for two reasons, not quite knowing what to expect. The first of which is that I had a really big five days before this. So I raced the big half on the Sunday, then I did a 15 kilometer track volume session on the Tuesday and did the session on the Friday morning. So not too much recovery in between. Secondly, the last two times I've done the session, I haven't executed it as well as I wanted to. I haven't felt that great. I haven't hit the paces I wanted to. And in both cases, I went on to run 2.22 in the marathon. So while this is still just a training session, it's not the be all and end all if it doesn't go perfectly. However, having said that, it is the biggest session of the block. It's the longest I'll run and the biggest indicator of what sort of shape I'm going to be in heading in towards Berlin. Ideally, you're looking to get your longest and hardest run in anywhere from around six to three weeks out from your marathon. Any closer and you run the risk of it staying in the legs come race day and too far out and you might not be in that ideal shape you need to be in order to execute the session. Right now I'm pretty much thinking what I would in the beginning of the race, trying to switch my brain off as much as possible, concentrate on that rhythm and flow and then the magic will come in that second half and more in particular the last third. I'll do another video at some point soon with an update on exactly how my training has gone ahead of this race. Put it this way, I don't think I've been in the shape for a very, very, very long time. And then I'll also do a video on what exactly my race strategy is going into this year's Berlin Marathon. I know that I need to feel as comfortable for as long as possible and all my PBs have come off negative splits. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. <laughs> so 
Here's a look at our kilometer splits for that first set. Averaging 327 per kilometer, exactly what I wanted and feeling strong. So can't ask for much more. And I must say it's such a relief knocking that first 10K set off. Into the second 10K set we go. And here we're looking to increase the pace a bit, progress from that first one to 323 per kilometer or around four to five seconds slower than goal marathon pace. Now this is probably similar to the effort that race day is going to feel like at a faster pace. And the reason why I say that is because on race day, you're going to be fresher, you have adrenaline, you have the crowds, you have the race day buzz, and that just gives you a few more seconds. In both the last two times I've done the session, I started progressing in the set till 5Ks, exactly halfway through the session, and then I hit a bit of a wobbly and regressed from there on in. I've trained potentially the hardest I ever have before, so I'm really hoping that's not going to be the case today. It's feeling really smooth, really comfortable, and in my mind I'm thinking, come on, feel like this in two weeks' time on the streets of Berlin. As you can see, we're checking our watches pretty regularly, and that's just to check we're on pace throughout the session. Here's a quick look at my fueling before the session. So for breakfast, I had two toasted peanut butter bagels with Manuka honey, double what you're seeing in this video. Then I had two beta fuel drink mixes, two gels, a chewy, as well as two shots of ketone IQ. So in total, there's 285 grams of carbs, which is a lot to burn through, but this is a monster session. I take it as follows. I sip a drink mix before and then a drink mix throughout my session. The chews I had at the start of the session, then I took one gel after the first 10k set and then another gel after the second 10k set. About a third of the way in, I took my first shot of ketone IQ and then I took my next shot two thirds of the way in and I just find that helps me focus and really dialed in. Remember what works for me might not necessarily work for you, but remember you have to practice in training what you're going to use on race day. We work far too hard within training to get stomach issues or anything like that or try anything new on race day. So ideally you're looking for around 60 to 100 grams of carbs per hour. Obviously I'm taking significantly more here in about 2 hours and 20 minutes of work. But the more I've run and practiced, the more my body's adapted to be able to handle more carbs. Okay, back to the session. We midway through the session, over 15 k's of volume in, and I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling like today I can pull it off, and I haven't done that for years. Working comfortably tough right now. In case you're wondering, a lap of Battersea is 2.8 kilometers. It's pretty pancake flat, so it doesn't get much faster than this, but a session like this means that you're running over 14 laps. Okay, I ran there from the station, so I'm doing just less than that, but you've got to almost switch your lap brain off completely and just run according to what your watch is saying and according to the job and focus at the task at hand. I'm no fool to marathon training and I know that the magic is made in these sessions right here. These moments right here, whatever you put in, whatever you push through, you will thank yourself for come race day. Race day, it's just the victory lap. Often you might be in a race and think, oh, I wish I'd done more. So I'm doing everything I can in this block and within the session right here to know that once I get to the start line, I fully equip myself to give myself the best possible chance. If I give myself enough chances, I know I will take one. Having said that, sub 220, as you know, I want it more than anything, but it's not the be all and end all. I'm loving marathon training. I'm loving the process and take sub 220 away and I would still do all of this completely. I love it and Rue does too with that boom shakalaka that you heard. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> Speedy stuff. We were pretty metronomic and we were nailing 323s per kilometer pretty much everyone this set. Couple of words of encouragement, but not losing focus because I know there's still a long way to go. Remember, this whole block of mine is tailored around one day. It's tailored around Berlin Marathon. So a few weeks before this, I did a 175K week followed by a 170K week. I went into the big half on tired legs. I didn't run to the best of my abilities and underperformed to my standards. So I was really hungry to try and make that right today. And today was all about really getting confirmation for how I feel and how much work I've been putting in over the past few weeks. Absolutely anything can happen on race day. We know this. And when it comes to marathon running, there's like a thousand variables that need to click. But I just want to get to the start line knowing that I've given myself the best chance and I couldn't have done much more.
Here's a look at the kilometer splits for that second set. 323 per kilometer, exactly what I wanted, and once again, it felt good, but here we go. It's the business side of it. Can I progress? I'm not gonna talk so I can give you a feel of just how hard I'm working. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on. You got this, Nat. Come on, come on. So is that it? Boom shakalaka. Just what the doctor ordered guys. 
I know it's only a session and we can't get too carried away. It's just a session, but in my last two marathons, I've kind of bonded out that session and it's the key session of the block. Um, today, I couldn't have asked for much more. Started with tired legs and um, I just managed to progress throughout, finished that, that fast in goal marathon place, last K the fastest. It was tough work, but um, yeah, felt in control. 36 Ks, 4 K cooldown. Um, we're looking good, we're looking good. We give ourselves a chance.